Hello, people on the internet. This is Squirrely Code, uh, and I've risen from the dead. I wasn't very active in the last two years on YouTube, and that's because I got plenty of work to do. I got uh, two kids, and I built a house, so that was some busy work. However, I'm back now, at least a little bit. I try to upload sometimes. Um, however, I prepared something for my students in school and now I've got a week off from school because there are holidays. So uh, I'm going to share this with you, dear internet people. Right, with that out of the way, I've been teaching my students about pathfinding algorithms um, and they are pretty hard to get into. They are probably one of the hardest topics in my whole uh, game programming course, which is why I decided to put in some effort to create very good materials for them, uh, which is also why I want to share them with you guys. So, you know, I can get a little bit more value out of those hours I put into those materials. Anyways, um, we're first going to look at the flood fill algorithm. Then we will look at the Dijkstra algorithm. And lastly, we'll have a look at uh, the the holy grail of pathfinding algorithms which every everybody talks about namely the a star pathfinding and if you get the content of this video then the other two videos should be rather easily understandable for you now before i get started i want to make a huge shout out to redblobgames.com uh, they were a huge inspiration and an amazing website concerning uh, deeper knowledge about pathfinding algorithms all right, so in order to understand the flood fill algorithm, let's first have a look at how it expands over the map. Now do note, uh, these dark tiles here, they are walls, and this is the starting point. So you may already have guessed where the name comes from. It kind of feels like if you drop a huge amount of water uh, in here and then it expands like a flood to everywhere that there is place so um, here we can already see those uh, the, the so-called frontier where the algorithm uh, kind of is currently mapping where the player needs to move in order to get back to here um, yeah so this is how uh, the algorithm expands over the map and now we're going to look at how exactly uh, this can be done. Okay, okay, don't be intimidated. I've prepared something for you. Uh, it's a very hard topic and I'll try to explain it as good as I can. So um, this here is uh, my playing field and I just created a three by three grid where the player can move. So uh, the first number here is the X position and the second one is the Y position. So uh, yeah, this is how we are going to like give those uh, grids a certain ID. Now we start here and we want to go towards the goal. Now, the way I implemented the algorithm is that it uh, starts at the goal and tries to find the way back to the start. All right, so let's have a look at how the algorithm actually works. Now, I start at the goal and then I move backwards to the start. I found this the more intuitive approach to this algorithm. So uh, firstly, we're going to look at the first tile, at the tile 2.2. Two. And uh, what the algorithm actually does, it just checks the neighbors and then evaluates in which direction they would have to go to reach the destination. So in this case, we would start with the top one, then the east one. There are none because we're at the edge of our uh, map. So uh, in this case, we only have a south one and we just say, we put this to the frontier. So that just means uh, we're going to have a deeper look at those tiles. So if I put them here, that means my frontier would now be kind of like this tile and this tile. So this is the frontier of the algorithm like you saw previously. Right, now we're finished with the first tile and so I'll put it into this visited list. 
And this list stores all the tasks that I've already inspected and checked for uh, the direction the player needs to go when it comes to this position. Now, the next part will be uh, to take the topmost uh, tile from the queue and the next one uh, moves up because that's how queues work, like in a supermarket or something. So now that we have uh, this tile, the first thing we need to do is we need to tell it uh, where it need where the player needs to move if he comes on this tile. So we want to say him, you need to move towards this tile to reach the your destination. And we can do this by adding uh, this tile into this dictionary. And we say the key of this dictionary is the tile and the value is where it needs to move in order to reach the goal. And conveniently, that's always the last tile we visited. Or uh, let's say that the tile that uh, was looking at its neighbors, okay? So in this case, it's just the goal, right? Yeah, we, we know now if we come onto this tile, we just look the, in this dictionary and we see, okay, next we need to move here in order to reach our destination. And that's already the first cycle of the whole algorithm. Now it starts over again. So we now need to look at the neighbors again and see if we need to do something with them. So the next part would be to check the north neighbor, which is already a goal. So I know I've already visited it. So there's no need to do anything with this. Uh, eastwards is nothing. And then southwards we see uh, there's this tile and we need to have a look at it, okay? So let's put it in here. And westwards, there's this tile, and we also need to look at this one, right? And with that done, we're finished with this tile. So we put it into the visited list. And then the whole thing just starts again. So we pick the first one from the queue, the others, uh, move accordingly upwards and we say we need to go this direction to reach our destination yeah and in code we of course can't draw this arrow so instead we again put this um, object in here as the key and say it needs to move this way okay so this again means if the player comes to this tile, he needs to move to this tile to reach the destination. And then we again look at the neighbors. Top one is empty, east one we already examined. Then the south one is already in the queue, so there's no need to uh, do anything here. The west one needs to be added to the queue. And then we're done with this one. Okay, so now we grab this tile. The others move up because it's a queue. And uh, the first thing again, we need to tell him where it came from. So we discovered this tile from this tile. So that's where the arrow goes. And we need to uh, put this in the dictionary so we can uh, know by code uh, what this arrow means. So uh, this tile goes towards two one like here and then we again check the neighbors so the top one we already visited so no need to look at that east there's nothing south there's nothing and westwards there's the go so this is something we need to look at so actually now the algorithm is already finished because it found the starting position however um for the sake of exercise, I'll just fast forward and show you what happens with these two still. Okay, so now we're at the starting position um, and we uh, found the starting position from this tile so we'll put this in here uh, that was two zero and then we're done with this one too and um, 
now we're completely done with our path. So the way this works now is we start our path at this position and then we just look it up in this dictionary. We say, okay, let's go here. And this says the next tile we need to move to is two zero. So we're now here. And then we look up to zero in this dictionary. That's here. And we say, okay, next we need to move to two one. Now that we're at two one, we look this up and this says we need to move to two two. And with that, we're done. That's the flood fill algorithm. Um, it's quite something to take in. You'll have to take some time and maybe watch the video uh, two or three times to understand it properly. Um, and next, we're going to try to implement this in code. Mm -hmm.